We are in Maseches Sanhedrin on Ches Amud Beis. Sanhedrin on Ches Amud Beis. The second wide line. Omer of Lazar, Omer of Hanina. This year, by the way, is in memory of my father Menachem Ben Akiva. The one who was also the first to talk Ben Hun the Tzipora. The first Yaakov Ben Suleika. So let's start. Sanhedrin on Ches Amud Beis. Omer of Lazar, Omer of Hanina. We are in the third wide line. Ben Noach. Shabal Ishtoi Shaloi Kedalka. A Benoyach that has relations with his own wife, Shaloi Kedalka, not the normal way, which means it's a way that the wife doesn't enjoy. Chayev, Chayev, wow. This opinion holds that if a Benoyach has relationship with his wife, even if she wants to have it that way, what we would call today sodomy, so then he's Chayev. Shalema, Vedovak, Veloi Shaloi Kedalka. The Dovak means, we saw before in the Pasuk, we quoted a few times before, the Dovak means he should cling to his wife. And we said that clinging comes to exclude homosexual relationship, which means what? So too by his own wife, if she doesn't enjoy herself, that's not called Dovak. When she's not enjoying it, she's not really clinging to him. And therefore, it's forbidden to him, for him to be like that with his wife. I'm a Rova. Now Rova is challenging that. And Rova says, Is there anything that Israel himself is not Chayev if he does it? And the Kuti is Chayev, which means, says Rova, it does make sense that there will be something that's permitted for Jews and also for Goyim. We always have more prohibitions. We have 613, they have 7, so even within the mitzvahs, it does make sense that the Goy should have something, also, which for us is allowed. And since a Jew, one second, since a Jew is either lo chayev or mutter, which means a Jew can be with his wife, shaloi kedarka, if both parties are interested and the Jewish person and his wife are interested in shaloi kedarka kind of relationship or relations, of sexual relations, that are Shalok Yedarka, then really it does make sense that the guy would not be able to have it that way. That's the logic over here. Yes, Emma? I think we go it's also to have a relationship with uh, that unnatural wife. No, where did we learn? Ellen is asking, did we ever learn that there is a prohibition about unnatural relationship? You call it unnatural, okay. It's true, it's not the normal way. The answer is, Tosfa says that there, is a, there are different ideas about different places in the Talmud. And yet, Tosfa says like this, on one hand, it says that it's allowed. There's one tomorrow that says that it's allowed. A woman came to, the, to a Rav, she came to Rebbe, and she told Rebbe, Rebbe, I set my table to my husband, and he turned over the table if you understand what that means. So Rebbe said, uh, okay, if he wants to, that's fine. You know, in other words, you know, if he's interested in that and you're not too upset about it, then it's fine. On the other end, there's another word that seems to be saying it's not allowed. So Tosfa says, and that's a local Lamaisa, Tosfa says that if the man has on a regular basis, this is all the time what they do, this is wrong. But if it's every once in a while, every once off back, every once in a while he has a taiva, he has some kind of desire, attraction to do it in Shalokid Arka way, he wants some kind of variation, so then it's okay. I saw one opinion says once in a lifetime, maybe, maybe the other more. Uh, make uh, opinions, but in any event, it's not completely prohibited. And since for a Jew it's allowed one way or the other, it doesn't make sense that for a guy it should be uh, prohibited. Yeah, like their level of kedusha is not higher than ours. That's the, the assumption. And therefore, Ella. So how does Rovo interpret the pasuk? Ella Merovo benoyach shabo leshes chaveloi shelo kedalka patu. A benoyach that has relations with eshes chaveloi with another non-Jewish woman who's married to his fellow friend, non-Jew, then he is potter. Okay, my time, why is that? Because of the same pasuk, Be'ishtoi, it says, V'dobak Be'ishtoi should cling to his wife. Be'ishtoi v'lo be'eshes chaveroi, V'dobak v'lo shelo kedalko. It says you should stick to your wife, cling to your wife, and not your friend's wife. That is to say, cling to your wife, and don't cling to your friend's wife. But if you say Shalokadarka is not called clinging, is not called being really together, 
then if the guy has relations like that with a non-Jewish woman, then he's not chayv. However, if, it's not called adultery. If a non-Jewish person has relations with a non with a non-Jewish woman in an adulterous way, and the way they yeah, the way that they do it is shalokidalko, in a way that she's not enjoying it, in a way that is not normal, as you say, to turn it around, then he's not fine. And she's not fine. Another married woman. Very good question. Very nice. Good question, Ellen. Good question. If a Jew has it in such a way with another married woman, he's fine. Very good. The answer is true. But the guy also, if the guy has relations with a Jewish woman, Who's married? Yeah, Shalok Adaka is also five. Get it? So therefore, now we're we're even. Get it? And Khanami, the guy cannot be holier than us, but he's not. In other words, and if a Jew has a relationship Shalok Adaka with a non Jewish woman, yeah, then it's also not good that there's any other concept of adultery doesn't exist there for us. And therefore, at the end of the day, the guy is like the Jew. Yeah? For a non Jewish woman, Shalok Adaka is allowed, and Shalok Adaka for him and a Jewish woman is Chayev. Okay, and that's our locha. Omer of Chanina. Now, Rav Chanina, besides the Sheva Mitzvahs, we're coming to add some other things. And we're going to today to talk about the concept of Goyesh Shabbos Chag Nisa. Going to keep Shabbos as Chag Nisa. We'll see a very, very different interpretation to that locha, but that's coming up soon. Omer of Chanina. We are in Sanhedrin and Chesam and Beis. Let's show the screen. Omer of Chanina and Chesam and Beis. The line starts Omer of Chanina. Omar of Chanina, Oivit Kechovim Shika is Israel Chayev Misa. In Oivit Kechovim, who, who, who hit a Jew, yeah, he smote him, hit him, slapped him, whatever you want to say, is Chayev Misa, he's really liable to get the death penalty. Shenema, soon we'll see what that means. Shenema, Vayifin Koy Vachoy, Vayak Yen Ish, Vayachis Amitzri. It says about Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he saw that an Egyptian man, the Egyptian uh, foreman, was hitting the Jewish person, and he he saw that. So what did he do? Moshe Rabbeinu smote him and actually killed him. Yeah, that smote him. Smote. Smote him. He smote him. He smote him, and what did he do? Killed him. And you see, that's the halacha. However, says the Rambam, don't take that uh, practically. Don't try it at home. Says the Rambam, really, is chayv misa bidei shemayim. Which means if a non Jew hits a Jew, it doesn't mean that he gets killed via dying by the base Din. The postulate to do it Moshe Rabbeinu is an asmachta, is a general inspiration to the idea, but it doesn't mean that it's actually being done. Says the Rabbim, it's Misa Bidei Shamaim, Hashem will deal with him and will take him away quicker. Gomer of Khanina, this is good for the Holocaust Day, because there's Holocaust Memorial Day, so coming. Yeah, they all deserved Misa. Somebody, whoever, even a Jew and a Jew, whoever whoever slaps the law, law is like the throat, but law means starting from the mouth. Anybody who hits the Jew by the mouth, yeah? So that's what they say? I don't know. I'm not sure that's true. Okay, so law, as far as I know, law is the, the upper part of the throat. Okay, fine. A certain law shall is all the one who hits his friend like that. It's as if he's It's as if he's smacking the shechina, the divine presence itself. Yeah, in other words, if you hit your Jewish friend on the mouth, it's as if you hit the Kadosh Baruch Hu God Himself. Why? The Pasuk says, Moikish Adam, the one who's Nokesh, the one who hits the person. Now, what's Adam? Adam, says Rashi, means a Jewish person, and soon we'll see why. Yala Kodesh. It's as if he's making the loa, the, the mouth or the throat, of the Kodesh, of the holiness of the Shekhinah. So Rashi explains, there's an opinion of Rabbi Shimon that says, yeah, the Atem Kuim Adam, yeah, Adam Atem, the Pasuk says, Adam Atem, you the Jewish people, you are my flock, you are my nation, and you are Adam. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai makes a statement that sounds very controversial, he says, Atem Kuim Adam, Vem Enem Kuim Adam, a Jewish person is called Adam, and now Jewish people are not called Adam, and that's why they're not Metame Be'oiho. Yeah, you are a Kohen, you can go to the grave of uh, Nelson Mandela and Davin there. Yeah, so I'm uh, sure that's what you'd like to do. In any event, yeah, you can go to the cave of any non-Jewish person. Why is that? It doesn't mean that the Goyim are not human beings. 
but it means that Adam was created in the image of God, and Yaakov Avinu had the same face, the same image as Adam Arishon. And Yaakov's face, Yaakov, Yaakov, my friend, my friend, my friend, Yaakov, Yaakov, Moshe is in a correcting mood today. Yaakov, we're good friends, Moshe and I. Yaakov is the one who's Bechir Ha'ovois, he's the chosen one of all three. Yaakov is the winner, he was the perfect forefather. And Yaakov has the same shape, that's why Yaakov's face is up there in Kisa Kovar, right? There are four images under Hashem's throne, and one of them is Yaakov's face, the Kisa Merkava, it's unbelievable. So, why is that? It doesn't mean that you go are not human beings. It means that us Jewish people, we took upon ourselves, in the times of Avram actually, we took upon ourselves to correct the sin of Adam Arisha. And the Goyim refused it. The Goyim says, none, none of our business. We all had to fix the, the, the hate to correct the sin of Adam Arisha, we're all children of Adam Arisha, and we are basically, we took the slack of everybody else. And that's why we're called Adam, we're continuing his narrative trying to correct his sin. And that's why there's a special status for Jews. If any guy wants to do it, let them convert or do whatever they can. In any event, so that's that's the idea. So that's why if you smack the person, it's Kilo you smack the Kadush Borfu. Now, I don't know why Dav Kaloa, which is like the mouth, I think because the speech is a very, very high spiritual thing. We always say what, what the difference between us and animals is the speech. That's why Lushan Hara and speaking negatively is so bad because the holiest part, you know that, uh, I think the Ben Shai says, that each and every part of the, the speech, whatever, and the throw the, the vocal cords and then the, uh, you know, but better. So it's connected Yud Kev of Kev. There are four parts, Ashkafi Kli, before the word is formed until it goes out, and connected Yud Kev of Kev. Connected each letter of Hashem's name. And that's why you're not allowed to speak, excuse me, you don't laugh. You're not allowed to talk in toilet. In other words, uh, when a person is really in the bathroom, I mean really in it, he's not allowed to talk even in English, French, or Chinese, not even different Torah, because the actual speech in any language has a certain level of holiness. And that's why there are certain situations which you're not allowed to talk, because speech as of itself should be, is, is holy. It's going through Hashem, so to speak. So that the kids also Christian and you in the shower. You know? mm -hmm. Shower is fine. <laughs> I'm talking about... It's the same room though. No. So, oh, if you're in the shower, which is the room where the toilet is, then you can't say Dibre Toiro. You can tell your daughter from when the shower, yeah, it's over there in the shelf, no problem. Especially in English, even in Hebrew. But to say Dibre Toiro, you're not allowed. Or even the word Shalom. You have a friend called Shalom. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. So that's it. But if you are actually in the process of doing something process physical... Of downloading. Of downloading, okay, that's his words. So then you're not allowed to speak at all. You have to wait a few seconds and then... But you, if they say... Is it a mm -hmm? Yeah, you can go... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but not speak. Okay. I think we've more than covered it. Let's continue. Okay. Now... The pot is in the Avdoi Shabbos or Shabbos Simon. Yeah, we are in the... Are you with us? Uh, yeah, yeah. Here came... Magbia here. Let's be Magbia. Sanedin and Ches on the base. The wide line here, in the middle of the wide line, starts. Start, uh, the one starts with Magbia. Magbia Avdo Shabbos Simon. We're going to learn a sugi to do with Magbia Avdo and Shabbos. Omer Shlaki Shem Magbia Yodo El Chaveroi. The one who raises his hand on his friend, raises his hand not in a good way, in order to hit him, in order to smack him. Afal Pishloi Ka Niko Osho. Even if he didn't end up smacking him. But the fact that he is behaving in such a threatening way, in such a violent way that's threatening to hit, Nikra Rosha is considered a Rosha, he's considered a wicked person. Shenema, the same story with Moshe Rabbeinu. I mean, the, the, the next story of Moshe Rabbeinu was when he spoke to the two Jews, right? That's the day after. Moshe told the one person, he told Rosha, he told the Rosha, the bad person, the wicked person, Lama What's Take? Anybody knows Hebrew here? Take is you will. Why would you, or but in proper Hebrew Take, why will you in future hit your friend? Lama hikita lo It doesn't say why did you hit your friend. Ela lama take. It says why are you going to hit your friend? Afal pishloi kam nika rosho. Moshe Rabbeinu already gives him the title of rosho, even though he didn't yet smite his friend. He didn't hit him yet because he's about to hit him. So what if it's called a rosho? Who cares if it's called a rosho or a tzaddik? Well, first of all, rosho is a very bad title. Secondly, I looked up the Shulchan Aruch. 
many times it's more as we think it's just a garita, some kind of you know nebulous idea. But really, there's Allah Khalamaisa. It says that a friend, a person who, who uh, raises his hand of his friend, that automatically is in Khairim. Today, unfortunately, there's no Kharamim, but he's automatically in Khairim. Even without the Ruach putting him in Khairim, everyone should, at that given second, says Shulchanor, should already. You know, be him, should ex excommunicate him and not join him in the minion unless he has to mechila and he's asking forgiveness from his friend. So if you know that somebody uh, smacks his friend, you should, uh, again, a local mice, unfortunately, today it's not done because whatever, we're not allowed to, but by whatever, different bodies. But conceptually, you see how severe it is not only to hit your friend, but even to uh, threaten to hit your friend in such a physical way. This is mostly talking to Dyson, with the Dyson's brother. Dyson and Aviram, yeah, to one of them, yeah. yeah. They were the two, the two Bettys in the story. Dyson and Aviram, they're the ones who were, yeah, one of them was hitting the other. Omar of Hanina. Nikra Choyte. Rav Hanina says the one who hits his friend or is about to hit his friend is called a Choyte, is called a sinner. Again, a very bad title, Shenema. And then Postuk is talking about a different scenario which we'll explain soon. Yeah, this Postuk is talking if I don't take it by the children, the sons of Eli HaKohen. Eli HaKohen, he was a very big tzaddik in the times of Shmuel, Samuel the prophet. And unfortunately his children were not nice. Chokni and Pinchas, Kohanim, they did a lot of uh, bad things in different areas. One of the various they did was, one of the few, is they were Kohanim who abused their power to take portions of the carbonos, of the sacrifices. Because, according to Aloha, a Kohen cannot take anything, let alone other people, cannot take any part of the korban before the korban, before the dam, the blood, is being, you know, sprinkled on the Mizbeach, and also the Imuri, yeah, should also go the, the fat part, the intestines, the more go on the Mizbech. Then the meat, let's talk about kochi kochi, khatas, osham, the meat goes to the koyen. Yeah, the meat goes to the koyen, and the koyen eats it whichever way he wants, as long as it's inside the, the mich, mishkan, back then it was a mishkan. But they were too hungry, and were too, uh, they were glutton, or I don't know why. They wanted to get the meat before this week is done. And the people told him, hey, that's against the locha, mister. So they said, either you give it to me now, or I'll force you to give me. Well, force means one thing. It doesn't mean na 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 na, -na. it means force, you know, so that's some kind of violent uh, a behavior. V'chsiv, and because they behave that way, threatening to take what they don't deserve, which is, by the way, like embezzlement, like me'ila, and they were threatening to do it physically, v'chsiv, v'chatas ne'olim g'doyilu me'oid. The sin of the ne'olim, of the young boys, Chofni and Pinchas, their sin was very great, and actually Eli gave them one off. Eli rebuked them. The father rebuked them severely. I don't know if that helped at the end of the day, but Lamai said they were cursed for generations later, and everyone will die young. Chofni or Pinchas? That's not the Pinchas from the Torah. Ah. No, <laughs> no, he was a good guy. Now, Chofni and Pinchas, Chofni, Chet, Pe, Nun, Yud, Chofni. There is such a name today, very rare. I heard uh, some demonic people call it Chofni. So, Chofni and Pinchas, not, the, that, not that Pinchas, they were, yeah, and also they dealt with the women, and things, whatever. Okay. Ravuna Omar, Ravuna says, Tikotzet Yodoy. Ravuna says, the one who hits his friend, or even threatens to hit his friend, according to what we say, Tikotzet Yodoy. His hand should really be cut off. He cut off his hand. Now, does it mean literally? Let's see. Shinema, Vizroya Romo, Tishabem. It says about the same person over there, yeah, the Vizroya Romo, Tishabem, the Zroya, the Tzrama. The, the arm that is ram, that is high, high up, in raise. order to eat, shall be broken. Raise, raise. Rama, raise, right? Yes, Rama can be raised. Okay, very good. Yeah, raise, yeah. Tishabel shall be broken. What does that mean? So, one meaning, according to Rashi, that means just not literally, Hashem will do it. In other words, Hashem will break his hand one way or the other. It doesn't mean that we have to do it ourselves. However, says Rashi, continues the Gemara, and I'm explaining according to Rashi, Rav Huna Katz Yodo, Rav Huna himself, when he was the 
the, 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 the leader, the Av Beisdin, he actually did that. There was a person, says Rashi, who continuously hit his friends. He was a violent person. And we learned a long time ago in this Masechta that if a person misbehaves in a way that is continuous and known to everybody, and he's abusing the Jewish system that is so nice and so flexible and so this, so then what do you do? You have to sometimes act out of the box and punish people in a way that is not with the halacha. So even though, according to halacha, it's not a based in thing to do, Ravuna said, no, this guy, it's a harass shah. Yeah, it's this, the case of this guy who's been so violent all the time, we have to take the law to our hands. We are the law. He was based in, and although usually halacha doesn't prescribe that punishment, we will punish him that way. That's how Rashi explains it. Tosfos argues with Rashi, and Tosfos says, no, Zoya Rome Tishava means halacha lamaisa. Really? The Pasuk Zohar Ramet Shavar is not just a masmachta, it really is a source to tell me that the person should have his hand cut off. That's halacha. According to Taisus, if a person hits his friend, and I guess he was warned, etc., and you know he's lazy, he cut off his hand. So we deal with violence in a way that is very strict. According to Taisus, according to Rashi, no. According to Rashi, it's only if it's continuous and repetitive, and he's making fun of the system, he's abusing the system, it's, it's an ongoing thing. Then the dying can decide, hey, now I'm going to use the extra power that I have, and I will deal with him that way. How does that? How I think does, it was first. Yes. Yeah. How does um, Tosfos relate to Ayn Takad Ayn? No, 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 no. Nobody says that. No. No, no. But I mean, uh, by continuation, it's, isn't it? Ayn Takad Ayn means the money. If anybody uh, pokes his, his friend's eye, Khalila, right. then he has to pay for the eye, not as the literal, not as the literal uh, meaning, which is an eye for an eye. But right. there's no everyone agrees with that. There's That's no, no extension to this situation. No, I hear the similarity, but they don't That's talk about that. No. no. I want to ask a fundamental question. Excuse me, excuse me for... No, however, excuse me. However, according to Rashi, it does this would also agree to that. If somebody smacks his friends right, left, and center, poking people's eyes and this and that, and he doesn't care to pay... Uh, let's say the guy's a billionaire, and, he's, uh, and he knows it, and he's uh, bullying everyone, and behaves like the, the sheriff, but in a bad way, and then he hits everybody right, and gives them scars and stuff, and he pays. What's that law? He paid five payments. He paid a million dollars. I assume, according to Rashi, at that point, you can say, hey, mister, it's, uh, it's been happening too long, we're going to cut off your hand. Yeah. Yes. I want to understand a fundamental question in that normally, under most circumstances, why, it's going to do with the Gomorrah specifically, but Gomorrah in general. Yes. You know, normally, one, a person normally follows in suit of their parents. You know, if you have a certain kind of way you bring your children up, they sort of copy you. Okay. So how come in the Gomorrah always we see that whatever Russia says, Tosma says the opposite? Oh, a child is allowed to argue. No, I understand that respectful. because if you're allowed to argue, but you would think that if you have a, a, a train of thought, and you think in a certain way, you would think that under most circumstances your kids would follow you. That's the beauty of Torah. And, and, and Yah Toy's voice argues virtually everything that Rashi says. Right. Not everything. Many times we we'll put Rashi to us. Which shows you how Judaism is not a robotical system. We're not a technocrats. On the contrary. I think that's the beauty of it. The grandson of Rashi, by the way, not all the grandchildren of Rashi. Some of them were not all of them. Some of the major ones. That the grandchildren of Russia, and yet if they feel the sugya is different, and never reason for it. It's because they're just poking at him. Generation and that no, 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 they saw it differently. We've been through that. No, we've been through that before. No, no, no. we don't believe in all these uh, circumstan circumstantial or all these uh, cultural things. Tosis sat down and learned the sugya with new, fresh look. And he's Rashi, very nice. And now to look at the sugya with their own fresh outlook, and they come up with their own ideas. We're talking about goyim and Jews now. Are we talking goyim and Jews? Or because it's the other? Yeah. About hitting the hand? Yeah. Uh, even Jews, yes, yes. Jews too. Right. Yeah, so yeah. But, and, and yeah. They have adjusted. Yeah. And the goyim have the same uh, same suck. In other words, this is... I assume so. I, I guess so. I guess so. I guess so. I assume so. 
yeah. so uh, the, the, the first process that we learned in this in this uh, 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 part where uh, Moshe killed the, the uh, Egyptians. Now, I, I, I can't understand how he's liable to death because Moshe says he, he turned here and he looked, he looked there and saw there was no man and struck the Egyptian. Right. Now, he looked here and looked there. Moshe saw that the, the Egyptian had no future no, children. No children, no, nothing in the boat, right. nothing the future. Right. How does that relate to uh, that? Uh, uh, he, should, he, should, he struck him and she killed him. How does that relate to it? I can't understand that. that he deserved to be to die he because to he hates the Jew. Okay, that's fine. He deserved to die. But, but if, how does it relate that if an idolater strikes an Israeli? Of course. He was an Egyptian. He was an adulterer. He was, a, he was an un-Jewish adulterer and a wicked one, Egyptian. And then, because he hit the Jew, yeah. he deserved to die, right? That's what we learn from here. Besides the point, there was another side point, a lateral thing, and that was that Moshe foresaw in his Holy Spirit, he foresaw in Ruf HaKadosh, that from that Egyptian, no good future generations are going to come up. So he has no justification to live anyway. He himself deserves to die. His children and grandchildren are not going to convert to become anything better. And therefore, he deserves to die. But if not for our tomorrow, yeah, if, why, why is he killing him? In other words, if not for the fact that somebody who hits a Jew deserves to die, then why did Moshe kill him? You give him a, a musr, tell him something, uh, strike him back uh, like that. Why did he kill him? Must be that, that was a, the correct punishment was killing him. Otherwise Moshe did the wrong thing, and we're sure he didn't. No? So there are two parallel points. The fact with the children, that's another point that he saw that there's nothing good coming up. That's besides so, the point. So, so the... Oh, that's okay. Okay, continue. Okay, Reb Lezero in there. Yeah, Borch, do you have the, the line? Oh, Reb Lezero yeah. and Nun, Ches, so, so this was pre based towards the end of the page. Yeah. This is pre martin Torah, but okay. a Jew at that stage was still high of to act for the Kiyum of the Noahide laws. Yes. Yes, yes, That's very good. good. It was before Martin Torah, but the Jews still had to, yes, very good. Rablezer, Oimer, Rablezer says, Enlo Tokono Ela Vua. Rablezer says, the one who raises his hand in order to, to smack his friend, then the only way that he's going to wreck his sin is by death. Kvura, that bad. Kvura meaning Mamish uh, to be buried in the ground. Shinema, it says in the Postuk, the Ish Zoya Loi Ho'ovetz. The man of the Zroya, the man of the, in Hebrew say Baal Zroya, a person of the fist, yeah, the person who's, you know, Baal Zroya, the one who behaves, who acts with his, uh, too physical, with his hands, Loi Ha'oritz, the land belongs to him. So according to this, it doesn't mean the land, the land belongs to him, which means he'll be buried in the land, his place is down under. I don't mean that down under, I mean uh, under the ground, yeah. However, Blazer interprets it differently and says, no, the land was only given to Bali Zois, only a person who's a Bali Zoa, a person who's a toughie, not, not violent, but a person who's a tough cookie, he is the one who the karka can be given to him. Shinema Vishroit explains Rashi. If you want to buy a piece of land, as we all know, many times you buy an apartment, you buy a piece of land, you want to buy a few apartments, a few uh, plots of land. So then if you know there's lots of problem coming, there's neighbors, there's people who want to steal the land, there's a problem with the government, there's a problem with all kinds of uh, violent people who may come to claim your land. So if you want to be a landowner, a landlord, you have to be tough. You have to know, not, not to encourage to be too tough, but you, you can't be a soft cookie, a fluffy, fudgy kind of guy and be a landowner, unless you have a good property manager, maybe today. But, but otherwise, you're in the wrong business. Yeah, you have to have tough skin if you want to do that. That's just like a piece of good advice, and that is the chart of the Ish Zoya Loi Ha'ovitz. He, he would own the land. Vomer Ishlakish, soon we're going to see a different chart to that. Vomer Ishlakish, my dechtiv oivet admosoi yisba lechem. He says, Oyvid the Moshe, the one who works the, the, the toils, the earth, is Balechem. He will be satisfied with his bread. He will have bread to satisfaction. He'll have good pranoso if he works hard. Explains Rishlaki. It's very simple. If you make yourself like a slave to the, to the ground, then you'll have good pranoso. Is Balechem. Vim laf, lo is Balechem. Says Rashi, if you always toil the earth and you don't laze around, 
You're not lazy. You work hard. Every stage of the agricultural process, you work and work and work the land and you toil and you till and everything like that. You do it all the time, then you're going to get good results, which means in English they say, no pain, no gain, right? There's no pain, no gain. If you want to, and the same thing is true about Torah, the same thing is true about everything. Don't be lazy. If you do something, do it properly. Although usually we don't look at looking, uh, working your ground is not like a Chosh of a Mitzvah, but if that's what you do already, so do it well. Do it right. Rav Steinman Zetzal, he told the uh, uh, people in Chadorim, he was the, the Nasi, like the president of many Chadorim, and he told them the Limudi Chol, although Limudi Chol in the Cheder is usually very minimal, you know, two, three hours a day, as opposed to the secular, which is the whole issue by itself. But he said if the children in those few hours, they have to be very serious, and they have to take the Limudi Chol very seriously. Because if you do it, do it seriously. We have a few hours for Chol, of course it's less than Torah, way less. But if you do it, don't let the kids muck around and get some class D teacher. If you do it, do it correctly. So um, otherwise, there's no results. You know, laziness is the worst thing, or not taking things seriously and playing around. That's definitely not a good thing. I have another saying. You have another saying. Good. Very good. Very good. Yes. Tell us. Whatever you put in, you get out. A job worth doing is worth doing well. Sorry. Whatever you put in, you will get out. Very good. Very good. We have oh. much more, much more fine sayings along this line in, in America. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> and this happy note will continue. The Maharsha, the Maharsha explains now very nicely. The Ish Zroy Eloi Ha'oretz doesn't mean the toughy. Ish Zroy means the one who's willing to work. Get it? The Maharsha is connecting the two words very nicely. The one who's an ish zohar, the one who's willing to really work hard physically with his hands, get your hands dirty, as they say, that person is going to have the job done right and he will be successful. Now we come with a whole new fascinating sugya about Goy Shoshov Aschai of Yes. Can I ask something from Tenet? Said that push or push or quick question, no, I don't like it, but quick, quick one. Okay, we'll continue. We'll continue and then we have, because we're behind, I'm sorry. Okay, we are in two days ago, she or something like that, but my We are in the third line from the bottom. Gomer Shlakish. Ovid Kachovim, a famous line, Ovid Kachovim, Shushavis Chayev Misa. In Ovid Kachovim, that Shabbos, so we think it means that he keeps Shabbos, right? right. We all know that <laughs> in modern Hebrew Shvita means a strike and it doesn't mean that here. I, there's a connection, but uh, modern Hebrew and old Hebrew are not the same. In Ovid Kachovim, if Tim McKenzie decides to keep Shabbos, we all know that it's not allowed, he's not in the Geyer, Chayev Misa. The first of all, Chayev Misa doesn't mean you actually kill him, not even the times of the Sanhedrin. It means that he should be told that he bad and deserves to be killed. But it doesn't mean that. Although Shabbos means, Shabbos means to keep Shabbos, we're now going to see that the meaning of it is much, much wider and fascinating. The, the, the definition of Goethe Shabbos is much, much wider than what we think. And that is, Shenema, listen to the Pazuk. What's Vyam Belayla Loish Boisu? There's a famous postuk at the end of, after the Mabul, the post diluvian era, when Noyev came out of the ark with all the old clothes. So then what? So then Noyev was told, don't worry, there won't be a Mabul anymore. Yam Belayla Loish Boisu, right? The, the summer, the spring, all the six seasons of the year that are mentioned there, they will not cease. Loish Boisu, they will never go on strike, they will always continue. The Gemara is learning that human beings, a regular human being, Joe Shmo, uh, whoever, and also Mackenzie, so what? They should be like the star, the moon, the sky, like the, the natural systems, and they should always function. Which means what? Let's continue. Once warned, automatically they should die if they don't keep it. Even on Monday. Huh? What does it mean, even on Monday? That explains Rashi, and now we're coming to a fascinating machloikis between Rashi and the Rambam. Explains Rashi. Shabbos, they're not allowed to keep to be like a Jew, right? Sunday, apparently Sunday, to keep Sunday as a holy day is a very old practice, already mentioned in the Rishonim, yeah? So, okay, that's already after Christianity started. If they want to make one day a week off as a religious day, that's our own Sabbath, that's, that's not allowed. They're not allowed to have one holy day a week, such as Sunday or Friday for the Muslim, that's not allowed, halakhically. 
Not only that, a filu sheni b'shabes. Meaning, let's say they decide to have a secular day off. They live in Prague, they live in Amsterdam. 90% of the people in those cities don't believe in anything. They say, no, religious, religion, nothing to do. Atheist, but I won't have my day off. They're not allowed to have an official day off once a week. According to Rashi, they're not allowed to have any day off. According to Rashi, Tim McKenzie cannot even this boss at 8 o'clock in the morning and say, mm -mm 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 with you, and I just want to have a day off and laze around in my house. The whole day that's not allowed. A guy is not allowed to have one day off completely without, without doing anything. That alone it's not allowed. He has to work every day. The saving grace, if you feel it's too strict, of Medayek, Rashi says, the entire day. <laughs> so he should do work maybe five minutes, you know, send his boss some uh, constructive email regarding work or do something uh, something work-related during the day, as I say, work from home, and the rest of the day can take the day off. But he had a complete day off, according to Rashi, is not allowed, even in an unorganized or irreligious way, that's not allowed whatsoever, that's Rashi. That's why it says, Afilu Sheini, not only Shabbos, which is the Jewish day, not only Sunday, which is a religious day, even Monday, some secular day, I want to have a day off, I've had enough of this boss, I just finished a project. No, you can't have a complete day off without lazing around and watching soap operas the whole day in bed, not allowed. That's Rashi. Rambam says no, Rambam says in a different tweak of the same thing, says no. They're not allowed to have an organized day off, even secular. But each one can take a different day off, like many offices do. An office that's open all year long, right? Some like, people take one day off. What? Flexi time. Flexi time it's called, okay? I'm not so much in the workforce as you know. In any event, yeah, I know a lot of offices, you take that day off, I take that day off. They're not allowed to have one day that's recognized as everyone's days off. That's not allowed. But if Tim McKenzie wants to have a whole day to laze around in front of the TV, not doing anything, that's allowed, providing that it's every once in a while and not a designated day. That's according to the Rambam. That's very interesting because we didn't know that, yeah? In other words, Gosh Shabbos means the guy cannot have a stand day off in different versions, Rashi or Rambam, because the Goyim all have to be like the system. People have to work. People be, have to be involved so in work. Be, and have... they say today, in today's world, one of the reasons I read that there's a lot of crime and a lot of problems also in the family is some people have too much, too, too much, uh, they have time off, really. You know, too much free time is not good. You can have a half day, whatever, but to have too much time off, you know, that's not a healthy thing. People have to be involved in work. So we can go out and defer from this, oh, we got from this lesson and start killing <coughs> religious non-Jews that keep suffering? <coughs> Nobody's killing anybody because Rabbi says you don't actually kill them. But when Mashiach comes, the whole concept of Sunday or Friday will be, you know, obliterated. M many years ago, I was working with a young Russian and he said when the Bolsheviks came into power, they wanted to abolish religion completely, okay? But there was a, uh, a resistance amongst the, the masses. They had to have something, so they had Sylvester. Uh, Sylvester you know, they, they, yeah, they couldn't get away with uh, co a complete abortion. Sylvester, Sylvester and Sweetie. Sylvester. That's like uh, Sweetie and Sylvester. 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 Uh, uh, I'm not Sylvester, so no, that's the one I'm not. Sweetie and Sylvester. I think New Year's Eve, yeah. You know Sweetie? You know Sweetie? Sylvester? The cat that always tried to catch a little bird? With big Russian I knew there's a kid, I knew there's a thing called Sylvester. No, Sylvester. And then they told me. It's the name of the cat that's always chasing that little bird. Yeah. I'm not Sylvester Stallone. Okay. Because we're in a movie, this is a color. Fine. Right. <laughs> so this is what the non Jews call New Year's Day. Okay. Um, says the Rambam, speaking of religion, the Rambam derives from here that Goyim are not allowed to invent any religion. Any religion, even even Islam, which by the way is as of itself not uh, not colliding with Yiddishkeit because they don't, they're not idol worshippers and they're not into anything Lotzanua or anything. But to invent a religion and say it came from Hashem is not allowed. It's not true. Hashem never commanded people to be Muslim or to be Christian or to be anything. So to actually establish a religion which is not Torah, which is not the seven Alphabet laws for most of humanity, that by itself is not allowed. And the Rambam extends so it So what would here. he have had them carry on, uh, carry on um, worshiping the stars? No, Islam. Islam is definitely, in, I mean, Islam in its original, <laughs> in its better best than form, better than Ovet Kechavim, that's true. And actually there is a Shkofa thing that says that Islam, and even Christianity, as much as we oppose it, there is say it's a stepping stone towards 
being a son of monotheistic, etc. But yeah, it's all still, believe in Old Testament. True, but true, but still, it's not the lechatchilo thing. It's not the good thing to have, and it's not allowed to begin with. What would be the ideal thing? Seven if Muhammad now. would come to them, or Moshe uncle would come to them and tell them, instead of worshiping the, the idol worship, you should be keeping the Sheva Mitzvah, but enough, as some people keep today. So, so that would be... The, uh, the, 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 the Rambam would explain what I heard, that... Um, uh, a number of years ago, a Noahide group from the States approached the rabbis and said, look, we have a problem. We have all these laws, but we don't have any social structure uh, like you Jews do. Right. Could we celebrate um, Parshas Noah as, like, as, as, as our sort yeah. of birthday? And the answer was no. I wonder why not. Because it's well, it could be because of the rumbum. It's almost uh, like... Uh, okay, but it wants to have it as Noachite. So. Okay, because you're inventing a new mitzvah, maybe that's why. So it, 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 it's a halacha that a Jew can't make their own religion, yeah? Halacha. No, nobody's allowed to make their own religion. Non-Jews are not allowed to make their own religion. Non-Jews? Non-Jews are allowed to Yeah, to are not invent a, 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 a religion so, is not allowed. Uh, and a cover a coma, the, 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 the Jews are now, they've got con more salty, conservative, reform. Oh, that's a whole new thing. That, that's for sure not. That yeah, that's, that's, that's for sure not. That that's worse than, yeah. than Islam. Okay, you Omar Abinu. You also have Chabad. I mean, it's a close religion 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 to Jews. Let's continue. <laughs> For the sake of okay. the camera. Our shir is a very jovial one, and we'll continue now. Frank the Gemara. Velich Sheva Gabe Sheva Mitzvois. Question of the Gemara is, why don't you consider that as one of the Sheva Mitzvahs Ben Enoyach? Meaning, yeah, we had a list of Sheva Mitzvahs. There were two versions to what the seven are, but none of them was not to keep Shabbos, and not to keep Monday or Tuesday. So, answers the Gemara, Ki Kachoshiv Sheva Al-Taisa. The Sheva Mitzvahs Ben Enoyach were all Sheva al -taisa. They were all negative. They were all don'ts, not do's. We do not talk about the do's, only about the don'ts. Don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Don't do this, don't do that, don't blaspheme Hashem. Problem with what? The courts. The Very good. Frank the Gemara, as Yosef is asking, we are in Nun Tes Tamad Aleph. Sanhedrin, Nun Tes Tamad Aleph. Frank the Gemara, the Dinin, Kum Asehu Vekachoshiv. Dinin is to have justice done. Dinin means that every goy, every male goy, has a chiv to make sure the justice is being done. Don't close your eye and, and you should see, whether it's either as a testament or a le legislator or as a judge, you should make sure that justice is being done. That is an active thing to have the court system, and yet it is in the list, right? So that's not what you were saying. And so the Gemara, whom I say, Veshem Alta Senin, who they're really both, they're really both. Explains Rashi, there's a post that says, Loita Su Avel, you should not do Avel. You should not do the wrongdoing. Don't do injustice, which means, let's say a guy <laughs> sees, I thought of an example, let's say a guy sees on his uh, Facebook page, he see that uh, Tom McKinley puts a photo, this is the beautiful new stolen uh, motorbike I just stole, and it's brand new and I love it and I stole it. And the people all give him likes, he's a very liked guy, that thief, and they all give him not so much into this, but likes and hearts and I don't know what's going on there. They all encourage the beautiful theft and say it is Chadesh, Mazel Tov, whatever. So that, what are they doing? They're over in Isidore Isa of, not only they're not doing justice, they're encouraging one of the, exactly. Yeah, they're perpetuating that kind of behavior. So really, Dini means two things. Don't turn a blind eye because it's negative. You actively have to do justice. And also, it's a don't and a do. Also, don't sit there and smile and grin and even encourage him to do the wrong thing. So that's why it's both. That's why Dinim are in the list. However, Shabbos is only an active thing because to tell a person, don't sit with your arms crossed, that is saying you should work. It's only one way to, to interpret it. You tell the going positively, you should work each and every day of the week. Yeah? Within the Mechlekes Rashi Toysles, Rambam, whatever, that's besides the point. And that's why something which is completely positive is not listed in the list. Something that is both negative and positive, which is doing justice and not perpetuating, that, that is in the list, because it's partially a negative commandment. Yeah, don't, you know, encourage it. Don't encourage the bad thing from, uh, uh, 
to happen. By the way, what, that's the reason, by the way, the first one explained, Rabbim says you don't actually kill the guy for that because it's not part of the seven. Only in those seven you kill him. But a guy who smote his friend, you don't kill him. A guy who broke, Sha who kept Shabbos, you don't kill him. And also the next prohibition for going, you don't kill him for that too. They deserve Nisa and should know it, but it's not being done practically. I was wondering in today's generation, uh, if a guy stays home, and why is he staying home? Because the son is about to go off the derech, yeah? So uh, he wants to give him extra attention. He wants to give him uninterrupted daddy son time. He wants to give him bonding time. So, I don't know, Mitzad Echad is not working, but it's not Batolo, because he's doing something constructive to keep his son uh, in a good way. <laughs> it's hard work. So I would say you're allowed to stay in the office for that, but I don't know, not a basic. But it's an interesting Shaila. He's not doing physical work or real work, but he's uh, he's, he's working on his fulfilling, family. He's fulfilling a, a positive the rights of mitzvah of of don't uh, the, uh, do other. Right. He's, 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 he's right. He's on the hardest job in the world being a parent. Absolutely. Baruch Hashem. That's a good one. Vamar Biyachana. We come now to a new Easter. Vamar Biyachana. Oyim Chachovim Shoisek Batoyo. In Ovid Kachovim, that is learning Torah. Not learning, but Oisik Torah. He's delving into the Torah. He's a professor in university and he learns Talmud and he knows how to learn. And he's learning the Talmud. It's a very fascinating thing, no? Talmud. Chayav Misa. He too is Chayav Misa. Yeah, that's not good news for him. You know, yeah. that, and this is not in one of my jokes, but there's more, Korean, gemor Korean. more Gomorrahs printed in Korea than in Israel. Okay. Yeah, so what about South Korea? We're all, we're all bothered about North Korea. What about South Korea? So let's see. Shenema, Torah Tzivalan Moishe Moiro Shok. Yeah, the postage which we said already in kindergarten, yeah. Torah Tzivalan Moishe Moiro Shakilas Yaakov. What's Moiro Shak? Moiro Shak is a heritage. Heritage is like an inheritance. It's something that we have, yeah, gotten from our parents. Yeah, we, we they bequeathed us something. Lanu Moiro Veloy lohem. It is our inheritance and not theirs, and therefore they're not allowed to learn Torah. If you have any questions, please wait because it's coming up soon. A lot of issues here. Frag the Gemara. The same question. Yeah. Well, why don't you consider it as one of the Sheva Mitzvahs? Again, same question like about Shabbos. Yeah, and that is also a negative commandment. Don't learn Torah. Don't learn Torah. So if it's negative, it should be in the list of seven. And says the Gemara, it is in the list. How come it's in the list? Mandoma Morosho. There are two ways to explain the word Morosho. If it's Morosho's inheritance, then Migzal Kagozilo, it's a form of theft. We see that theft by Goin is not only to steal money or bike or motorbike, it also means to steal someone's wife. And also here, you steal the inheritance of a different nation. Let each nation have their own inheritance. You know, the Africans have their thing, and the Eskimos have their thing. And we have, Baruch Hashem, our thing from Hashem. And no guy should interrupt and take something that is ours and, and, and learn it. Because learning it, it's as if you own it in a way. You're taking the holiness of the Torah. As long as he's not keeping Torah, and he's not supposed to keep the six thirteen mitzvahs, and he's learning the Torah for intellectual pursuit only, without the holiness of it, that is wrong. But let, let me, in a few lines, the ends will be clear. Man, the other man, the other way to explain Morosho, is man de omer me oiroso. Morosho, atikir Morosho la me oiroso. It's like engaged to us, the Torah is like our wife. Dino kenara Morosho de beskila. Just like a man, a boy and a girl are already mulas, they are betrothed, and she's his girl already, and another man, even a goy, cannot be with her, it's not a morosa, so too the Torah is like her wife, and anybody who's learning the Torah is ke'ilu having relations, so to speak, you know, on a spiritual level, and that is not allowed. Let me, no, no questions for the next five minutes, now entering North Korea, no questions allowed, everyone's keeping... Uh, yeah, and then we'll go out soon to freedom. Maybe the Gemara is challenging that. Says Rabbi Meir, how do you know that an Oivet Kachovim who is delving deep into Torah, Shukikoyen Godol, wow, and Goy, Tim McKenzie decided to really go into learning Torah, is as great as the Kohen Godol, and it's good and it's great. It's a high, high level. It says about the Torah, a man, an Adam, should live by the Torah. Continues the Gemara, Koyhanim Levim Yisrael and Lonema. It doesn't say the Torah only belongs to Koyhan Levi Yisrael, meaning different parts of Jewish nation. Elaha Adam, 
any man, any descendant of Adam, alamadet or shafilu evet kuchavi mosef betoyr or harei kikoran gadol. In other words, haodam vechabayim. Even any kind of guy, any human being that studies Torah, that's a great thing because Adam, any descendant of Adam, Chabem. And by the way, Rashi mentions Rabbi Meir argues with Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Meir is more universal and pluralistic. Rabbi Meir says what? That any human being is like Adam Arisha, not only the Jews. That's Rabbi Shimon's opinion. Rabbi Meir says no, which also means that if you go to, a, to the cave of a guy, you become Tamil also. Yeah, the guy and the Jew in that respect to the same level. In any event, it's a problem. You're telling me a guy who learns Torah, Chayv Misa. And Ramir says, no, a guy that learns Torah, then what? Then he's a great guy. He's a high level like the Kohen Gadol. What's going on here? And Rabbi Yochanan is an Amayor. I can't argue with Rabbi Meir. It's a time, by the way. That doesn't work. Yeah, they can't argue with each other. And says the Gemara, Hosa B'Shevim Mitzvah Didu, as simple as ABC. Depends what kind of Torah he's learning. If he's learning the Sheva Mitzvahs of himself, meaning he's delving into all the details of the Hashkafa and the whatever of the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noyach, and some points can say you're allowed to teach a Goy Chumash, at least Bereshis, because that's the foundation for all the belief. Why should he keep the Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noyach? He wants to know that you can teach him a Silas Yishar, maybe, Musar, in order to in order to get him into the idea, yeah? And therefore, that Sheva Mitzvah's Nenoyach and the derivatives is allowed to learn. But let's say the guy picks up uh, a copy of uh, Nida, Kilayim, Tfilin, Tzitzis, no way, no way, Jose, if your name is Jose, whatever, and you happen to be not Jewish, so that's not for you. And then he's Chayv Misa, because then he's not doing it for anything practical, for intellectual pursuit only, that Ramosha is called the way of death. Yeah. In other words, although we can be learning and he can be learning, it's not the same thing. To having relations. You can't say, you know, uh, who cares? You know, her husband has relations with her ten times and the adulterer only once. Uh, it doesn't make a difference. It's still a terrible, terrible thing. So too, if the guy learns Tyra, he's taking something that does belong to him, and if he's learning the uh, how many mitzvahs? Six thirteen minus seven, yeah, those mitzvahs he should not be learning. Yes. Uh, so I know you were first, yes, yes, yes. Ellen has a question. Uh, yeah. He's a member of my shul in England. He's an intellect. And he studied the Torah uh, for his own intellectual purposes. And he's Jewish? And, 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 he, and he converted Judaism. And he's a, he's a, uh, wow. And he's a real uh, person. Wow. Okay. Fine. See, that's the other side of person, an intellect studying Torah, he can, he can. That proves to you that he wasn't only intellectual, he was intellectual and was seeking and, and, and pursuing he, something. He was and he Maybe in his previous what? life he was a Yid. And he believed. Yeah, and that's not a joke. No, he was a, he was a guy. No, I'm, I'm not saying it's a joke. He might have been a Yid in his previous Yid. Yeah. Previous incarnation. Yeah. And, and second of all, Rabbi, Rabbi, Matt, Rabbi Matt, Probably. Uh, says that the Torah was made for man. But we just learned. Adam. Oh, Adam, man. And I, I just learned that Adam is uh, uh, with, with, out of the Judaism. Of the, of the I Adam. just said, Rabbi Meir Rabbi Shimon argue, yeah. my friend. I, I address that. Yeah. According to Rabbi Shimon, Adam, Atem Kriv, Adam means that Jews are called Adam and Gaim are not. Rabbi Meir argues with that. Rabbi Meir argues. That's annoying. Can I can argue. Rabbi Shimon says X and Rabbi Meir says Y. Rabbi Meir says no. Gaim are also called Adam. Yeah, for many different uh, applications. And therefore, the guy can also learn Torah, the least those have a mitzvah. However, says Rambam, uh, I'll be with you in a second, Baruch, the Rambam says that goyim are not allowed to be mikhaim mitzvahs other than sheva mitzvahs, unless they accept it. Remember what we said? If the guy accepts inside the sheva mitzvahs, he says, I'm a ger to I want to accept Judaism in its minimal form. I don't want to become a Jew. I want to keep the sheva mitzvahs. You can also mix and match other mitzvahs as well, and then you can learn the Torah of them. So you can, as it goes along, it's like, uh, you know, take the boxes that you like. Yeah, I think many Jews would also like to have that way, but it does, doesn't work for us. And then you can learn the Torah of that too. The Rambam says that Shabbos you can never keep though. According to the Rambam, you can never ever keep Shabbos, but the Mishnah Bura, quoting other Shonim argues. It says, if you go accepted as a Ben Noyach, he accepted Samitzas, he can also include Shabbos. Because he's already halfway in it. We have to continue a bit because we started late. Yeah, most people came late today. Yeah. I'm not punishing you, it's not probation, it's just another few moments of enjoying yourself. Yes. Now that the Shi'ur is safely in the soul of South Korea, the southern 
foreign portion of Korea. Okay. Uh, in the face of this Gemara, with yeah. their souls, their, 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 as a nation, they learn the Islamic. What do they do with this? How do they? How, so how again, do they I don't know exactly what North Koreans learn, what they don't learn. Uh, I mean, South Koreans. I don't. North Korea. I don't want to know. The South, I don't know exactly how they take it, but I do know that they have a lot of emotional appreciation to learn the Torah. My son, uh, Baruch Hashem, was uh, in Ponovich for a few years, and the South Koreans, every once in a while, they come to Ponovich and they, they look at the Bokhrim with amazing admiration. And they really admire Jews as learning Torah. Maybe that is a step in the right direction. As opposed to a university professor who learned the Talmud like, and start criticizing and start learning the wrong way, which is not what we want. So, I don't know. You know I, I don't want to talk Chas Rishon, especially, you know, I may have a bigger audience, but I don't know. Depends where the guy takes it. But conceptually, it's not meant to, to be the thing. You can learn the Agaditus. Let's say the South Korean guy learns an Agaditus, which is inspirational. He learns Shabbos Lamedalit about the mercy of Hila Lozok, and I would treat it very nicely. I assume that's a good thing, because the guy gets inspired, and hopefully gets to keep the Shabbos in Magaya. If the South Koreans really break their idols, and they start, you know, stop, if they stop worshipping idols as a result of that, that would be wow, that would be great. You know, the Far East is full of the Lozok. And it should be stopped. I mean, not in a violent way. It's saying, otherwise they would realize it. So if they, if it's a step in the right direction to get them closer to the truth and to the Shemim, then great. If it's not, then no. Again, I don't know exactly the reality there. I don't like to talk about things I don't know, which are many. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some feedback from... Maybe if we have South Koreans' uh, views, you know, uh, well, maybe they'll, they'll reply. Uh, you just have to stop worshiping wor the moon, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's continue, yeah, two more minutes. There's yes. so, sort yes. of a parallel between the um, Ger that starts taking on the extra mitzvahs and a uh, Hosea B'Tshuva. Absolutely. About Shuvah that comes from uh, zero or from yeah. something, and he slowly keeps yeah, so more and more mitzvahs. It's, it's not an Avera that he hasn't taken the whole lot in one day. Of course. Uh, we all grow in stages, and uh, it's a big problem. <laughs> Some of the they grow too quickly, and then they drop it off. If you grow too quickly, out. too fast, uh, what? They fry out. They fry out. A lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Too many a lot, and then a lot in uh, his beam, yeah. Rav Chanin ben Gamliel Oimer. Afadam in Let's quick, just a few more lines. So we said that Rabbi Chanin Gamliel believes that we're talking about Eber Minachai. The next sugya, maybe there will be an introduction for Sunday's year already. It looks like it's at the end of the week now. So we just spoke about Sunday not being a holy day. So here in Israel, we all feel Sunday is a regular day. Um, in any event, um, Eber Minachai is the one mitzvah in which Jews and Goim are very, very similar. Because so far we saw that the Gdorim, the, the definitions, of Arias are different by going to Jew. Marriage, divorce, Lokidarka is different, right? Also it comes to murder, even the law is raw, all these things. When it comes to uh, murdering, let's say, unborn babies. Yeah, right? Ah, there's an Afkamina you should know, very interesting. What the Catholics do, I assume, I highly assume they took it somewhere from us because there's a the big enough Kamina, let's say, between a Jew and a non-Jew doing an abortion, making an abortion. Let's say the mother's life is in danger. Yeah, that happens a few times, a little later, but it does happen that a non-Jew, <laughs> Jewish or not, a lady, yeah, is in danger because of the fetus, you know, some kind of whatever, the toxic and things. So then what do you do? You definitely kill the baby in order to save her life, right? That is, if she's Jewish, for sure. The Catholics don't believe in that. They say no, they're against abortion like uh, hell-bent. Now, by us comes an interesting question. What happens if there is a non-Jewish gynecologist and according to us, he's not allowed to do hapala, and hapala, the abortion, is as bad as killing for the non-Jew to do. So then, it's not so simple that he has to kill the baby in order to save the mother, because they're equal. So Tessa says, like, it discuss uh, uh, either Tessa or, I think Tessa, or it's on one of the Rishonim, we get confused who says what, that it's not so simple. There is a tzad to say yes, to kill the baby in order to save her, but there is a tzad to say no, because you know, why, why is she better than him? So, I'm just saying it's a discussion. But again, that's if the gynae is not Jewish. If he is Jewish, then she should go to a Jewish doctor, that lady. Because if he's Jewish, then he can definitely kill the baby in order to save the mother. 
life. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get it? Okay. Then I'm just I'm giving the Akdama how different mitzvahs apply differently to Jews and Goyim. Well, every Minachai, which we'll discuss on Sunday, in that respect, in most cases, is pretty much the same. There are no big differences, but every Minachai, which is what? Which is taking the limb of a live animal and eat it, yeah, while if the limb was taken from the animal's alive. And there's the discussion about the Dam Minachai. The new discussion, which we'll discover on Sunday, will be, let's say somebody like some African tribes do it. I'm not joking now, I, I did read it in a I few places. I many of us people eating their things alive. Oh, please, 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 please. <laughs> okay, there are African tribes, they, they, they cut the, they make a cut, a seizure, a cut, a cut in the cow, and they suck the blood of the cow, and they believe that that gives them power to, to be better warriors. So then, don't try it at home. That's not nice, but the question is, is that a separate Easter for a Jew? In other words, we're not allowed to drink blood anyway, it's an Easter chorus. But, comes another question, is there an additional Easter of Dam Minachai? Let's say that the, the animal is dead, and uh, you eat a liver with all the blood, that's an Easter. But let's say the animal is alive, then African uh, 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 tribe thing, is there an additional Easter of Dam taken from a live animal while it's alive? That's going to be the discussion for Jews also, for Jews too. That's going to be the question. Da 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 da. Preview. How long are you going away for? Preview. I'm going Sunday night. I can't say it online. It's too many people know about my private life. That's already. Uh, that's for closed circles only. Yeah. Am I on? Sunday I, too. Thank you very much. And how much Have of the week will you be going? Uh, I'll be going. Uh,